hello lovely people welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing my monthly wrap-up for april so i decided to break up what would normally be one video into two so i posted my may drag queens choose my tbr video last week and now i'm going to give you more in-depth reviews of the books that i read in april so i didn't play um my tbr game in april because it was my birthday and i wanted to just be able to mood read and i did so i just thought we could go through the books see what i liked what i didn't like if i recommend them and that will be that so let's just jump right in so the first book that i attempted to read was she who became the sun by shelly parker chan this was the not wasting my 20s book club pick for the month of april and i actually dnf'd this which i'm disappointed about because i thought it could be good and the first 100 pages were good and then the middle dragged on so badly that i just had to put it down the plot of this book is it is theoretically a mulan retelling a girl who grows up in a very 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 poor village um and a bunch of people raid the village and her only option um is to flee and impersonate her brother who has been told throughout his whole life that he is like the chosen one, he's lucky, he has all of these amazing things coming to him. Um, so she decides that she's going to take on his likeness, because women can't really do anything um, at this time, and become him, and she goes to a monastery, and then she eventually joins the war. So, what, what was going on with this? I liked when it was just about her and her family which is the first part of the book but as soon as she leaves and goes to the monastery things start to get confusing and less fun and then when she leaves the monastery for the war that's when it just went downhill for me so i started to get confused about who the characters were who was talking and what sides they were on in the monastery it was fine because very few people were mentioned and anyone who was was very in-depth described but as soon as we left the monastery and went to the war there were way too many people i could not figure out who was who um the names are very similar and i just got completely lost and the kind of premise started to go downhill for me there's a lot of fantasy and uh like spiritual and paranormal elements in this book that i wasn't expecting i was hoping for like a mulan retelling where she um just like takes the name of her brother and goes to like fight for her family's honor but that's not really what happens i wanted to know how it ends i also am wondering where the romance comes in because it's supposed to be like this amazing um like different story but i don't know where the romance comes in there was definitely no love interest that i could tell by the time that i dnf'd this and i think i dnf'd this about 150 if not 200 pages in so I, it just wasn't going anywhere for me and i just got to the point where i was like there are so many other books that i want to read this isn't worth my time which is unfortunate because i do really want to know how it ends and now i won't uh so i dnf that i think most people in book club struggled with reading that book especially the middle chunk i'm not sure if it gets better after that but i just didn't have the time to decide so i dnf that then i picked up four aunties and a wedding by jesse q sutanto and this is the sequel to dial a for aunties which is one of my favorite books of 2021 what did i rate it i give it four stars so dial a for aunties the plot of that is this girl meddy her four aunts and her mother are 
uh, or her mother is one of the aunts. Yeah, her mother and her three aunts are, you know, kind of, she comes from this Asian, uh, Chinese Indonesian family and they run a wedding planning business. And in the first one, she doesn't really want to join them, but she does. They're planning a wedding, all these things go wrong. She's reconnected with her high school boyfriend and it's a second chance romance. The sequel, they are getting married. So instead of asking her aunts to plan the wedding and do like one of them does flowers, one of them does the food, one of them does hair and one of them does makeup or makeup and music, I don't remember. Um, she recruits another family that's also Chinese and Indonesian and has a lot of the same quirks that her family does to be the vendors for this wedding overseas in England where her partner is from. Um, and then she finds out that they might be the mafia and everything unravels. And I think the reason, so I did enjoy this book. I enjoyed the beginning and the end, but the middle caused me so much secondhand embarrassment that I almost just put this book down and didn't finish it. And that's weird because Dialy for Aunties is also very eccentric and weird. And there's all these things happening. And you're just going like, oh my God, what is gonna happen next? But this got to the point where I was like, I can't handle what's happening. It's so embarrassing and so like horrible for the characters. I almost put it down, but I persevered and I finished it and it's really cute. It's just as like funny and wacko as the first book. So if you liked the first one, I think you will like this, but it's a little bit more over the top and that just kind of like, um, caused me a little bit of like, you know, when you're just like reading and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. That's how I felt. But I really enjoyed it. Jesse Q. Sutanto writes just these books where you get to the end of every chapter and you're just like, oh my God. And then you just have to keep reading. So I enjoyed it. I recommend quick read, light hearted romance, a little bit of mystery, comedy, you will, I think you'll, everyone will like this. So read Dial A for Aunties first or it won't make sense. The next book that I read was on audio, but it is actually out in print now. And that was Under One Roof by Ali Hazelwood. So Ali Hazelwood is the author of The Love Hypothesis, which was another one of my favorite books of 2021. And this book did not disappoint, but all she decided to release th the three books on Audible before they came to print. So this was the one that was the most compelling to me. And so I picked this one up. The plot is that throughout the series, there are these three girls who went to graduate school together um, in the sciences and then now are living apart. And each book focuses on one of them and then the romance that follows. So this book focuses on Mara and when her um, PhD, I think like mentor or like, there's a word for it, but I can't remember what it is. It's like the person who like reviews your PhD or whatever, like your, your dissertation. I don't remember what it's called. When she dies, she leaves Mara her house in Washington DC, which is great because Mara got a job in Washington DC. But what she doesn't know is that there is somebody else living in the house and that is the nephew of the PhD um, professor. So she doesn't really wanna sell her part of the house and she doesn't have enough money to live somewhere else without selling it. So she decides to move in with her roommate who is Liam and he is basically like the complete opposite of what Mara would ever want in a person. She is an environmental scientist and she's working for the government and he is a lawyer for a major oil and gas company. So they kind of butt heads and they're kind of waiting until she gets enough, makes enough money to move out and my camera overheated so I'm not 100% sure where I was but essentially as you can imagine it is enemies to lovers and it is a romance. So I think you can probably figure out where this is going. My only issue uh, with this book and the only reason that I gave it, I'm pretty sure four and a half, yeah, 4.5 stars instead of five was the way the audiobook, and I assume this will not be a problem in the paperback, but the way the audiobook is structured, the way the book is structured is that it starts with the prologue, but the prologue is 
integral to the book. So you have the prologue and then you jump back in time and then you work yourselves all the way up to the where the prologue is again, but you don't experience the prologue again. So then you just continue from the prologue. And it took me two or three days to listen to the audiobook. And so by the time we got back to now, I couldn't remember what the prologue was about. So I was like, I don't know where we are, you know, like I can't remember how we got to this situation that's now coming from the prologue, if that makes sense. So I think um, when you buy the physical copy, that won't be a problem. Just flip back to the prologue and figure it out. But it's a lot harder in the audiobook. I was driving around. So that was my only qualm with the book, but I loved it. She did an amazing job as always. And I would have maybe wagered that this is spicier than the love hypothesis. So you're welcome. <laughs> Speaking of spicy books, the next book that I read was Her Villains by Jade Presley. And this is a reverse harem novel fan fiction about Marvel. So I saw this on TikTok and the intro uh, or like the dedication for the book is for Marvel fans who want a little bit of spice. And I was like, that's me. I like this. So I got it on Kindle Unlimited and I don't know how I feel about this book. Um, so we have our main character. Don't remember her name. She is the queen, the princess of this one world. And her father marries her off to the four brothers of the other world that they're usually fighting with as a form of an alliance. And the four brothers are Tor, Steel, Locke, and Talon. So as you can imagine, Thor, Steve... Loki and Tony um and then basically there's this her her plan and her father's idea is for her to use her like beauty to lure them in and make them fall in love with her and then she can kill them all that's what her father would want but obviously that doesn't really go to plan because all of them are much nicer than she thought and maybe everything that she was told growing up about this other world isn't necessarily true. So for a spicy fanfic, like I thought it was good, I gave this book three and a half stars, but I don't understand why the author did what she did with the plot. And essentially we get to the end of the book, there's a climax they do what they need to do and then they're like oh well we have this other thing that we need to deal with in three days and the book ends there for a sequel and to me like three days that's not long enough to need a sequel just have the battle in that book i don't see why there's a need for the sequel so that was frustrating to me because nothing really happened and then now there's another book for nothing to really happen in but I'll probably still read it and see it comes out later this year. If I can fit it into my TBR at all, then I probably will. But like, I don't know. It's, yeah. The But the smutty scenes were good. So if that's what you're looking for, go for that. I just wish she'd picked like either porn or plot, not both. Because the plot just kind of fizzled out and wasn't good to me. Then... For Spicing Up My 20s Book Club, I read The Fine Print, which is also on Kindle Unlimited. And I had very low expectations about this book, but it blew me out of the water and I actually gave it four stars. So um, this is another series um, called the Dreamland Billionaire series, and it's written by Lauren Asher. So this is book one. And basically it, the series follows three brothers who are like super wealthy and their grandfather dies and he tells, he gives each of them this task that they have to fulfill in order to get their portion of the inheritance. So guy number one, we got Rowan and he is, his uh, task that he has to do is he has to go and be the CEO at the theme park world essentially that this Grand, that their family owns which is essentially Disneyland or Disney World and he doesn't want anything to do with that because literally I needed a new camera because it overheated again but anyway Rowan is like he's just an older stoic businessman now he doesn't have time for dreams but if he wants his like billions of dollars he has to go 
he meets this girl Zara who's been working at the parks her whole life her family works at the parks too and they always have and um she has an idea of how to make the park better so she submits it to his contest and he ends up picking her and they end up kind of like working together to um, help him reach his goal but she doesn't know about the goal and it's very enemies to lovers grumpy sunshine um but quite spicy i did enjoy it and i enjoyed it way more than i thought i would so i will pick up probably the second one's out now and it's about another the other one of the other brothers who has to like get married and have a kid in order to get his um part of the fortune which don't do that to people that is abuse i don't think that that should be allowed but anyway um yeah so i gave this book four stars i was pleasantly surprised the only reason i didn't give it more is because i wasn't like reaching to pick it up like i was like okay i have to keep reading because i need to finish this in order to go to book club um but i did enjoy it and i'll probably read the sequel and i have saved the best for last because the last book that i read is the night circus and i am in love with this i love this book so freaking much you guys where do i begin i'll tell you the plot i gave it five stars if that's not obvious miss heather's pick sticker is causing problems for me come on did you know that if it's a Heather's pick and you return, you can go to Indigo if you don't like the book and they will give you your money back. Apparently. Because she knows so much about books that if you don't like a book that she liked, she will give you a refund. Anyway. Um, the plot of this book is this circus that is only open at night and it just arrives in cities and there's no warning. And um, there are these two magicians who since basically they were like five years old have been pitted against each other by um these other musicians basically it's like a cold war scenario so they're fighting the proxy war for these two other magicians and these two other magicians the older ones have been doing this for years so these are just the two most recent ones but they don't know who the other one is that's part of this competition but they are like branded to each other so um they are basically in this fierce competition but nobody really knows the rules how it ends how you do it essentially um and then they kind of fall in love so this book is hard to explain because there's a lot going on it's not a chronologically told story and the book basically is in a few different parts so there every so often there is a piece of the book let me see if i can find one where you are experiencing the circus as the reader so she describes um like you are blah 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 yeah like here so it's like in this tent suspended high above you there are people so then it's in like second person the other perspectives that you follow are the maker of the circus the creator of the entire idea the designer of the circus he throws these lavish parties and then they he decides that he wants to put this circus together then you are jumping ahead a few years to this boy who is dared to break into the circus during the day and he meets one of the performers and then he's kind of tied along to the circus as well and then you're also following like what's going on in the circus and you're following what's going on with the two magicians so there's a lot of jumping around but there was never a part in this book where i was confused about the characters and that is a direct um comparison to this book because each of the characters in this book were so developed and so like well understood by the author and well conveyed to the reader but there was never a time where i was confused because i was like this guy does this these are his motivations this is what he likes this is who he is and i never felt like i didn't know the character or didn't understand where they fit in the story but outside of the plot the prose is absolutely beautiful you can see here the first like two pages i have um stickies of amazing quotes and at the end as well and it's just perfection from beginning to end um never 
since Harry Potter have I felt like more like I wish something was a real place that I could visit because the way she describes the night circus I just want to go and I want to experience it and I want to be one of the people who just gets to like take in all of these magical tents and everything and mm, it just it I just love it it's one of my favorite books of all time and definitely one of my favorite probably my favorite book that I've read this year so far at least in this kind of like at least of fiction so amazing I love it I don't know what else to say I love it too much um but I would like to pick up her other book so let me know if you've read both of them and if you think that A Starless Sea like fits similarly to this I don't want to be disappointed but I love her writing so those are the books that I read in May as well as audiobook and two Kindle Unlimited and I hope you guys enjoyed this little um wrap up separately from the TBR game. If you did, let me know. I can always put them back together if you don't want to see its own video, but I thought I would put out some more content so I'd split it up. And yeah, let me know what your favorite book was that you read in April. I guess I said May, I meant April. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.